Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. This morning, we will complete 1,295 mornings of Meaningful Mornings. This morning, we will complete 1,075 mornings into the Bhagavad Gita. This all means we have five more mornings in this semester of Meaningful Mornings. This means we're in the final two verses of the entire Bhagavad Gita of 300 verses. I prepare light notes for each verse. And if I can show you here, this is my last page. So that's today. And then I have four more spots. There is much completion that we are generating, that we are feeling. When I was sharing with Sheila about these days and these verses and so on, she said you should have a meaningful morning's party where everyone simply expresses how they've changed, what they're feeling. And this is very much in line with gratitude is the attitude. June 16th is Father's Day. That's 10 days from now. I will be with my master at Sandipani. And part of my Father's Day gift to him. Our team is preparing an article, <coughs> article on what Meaningful Mornings is, particularly through the Bhagavad Gita, and I will give this to him. I've also encouraged Sheila and my kids to write cards or notes and give it to me for me to give to Puja Swami Tejomayananda. Because Meaningful Mornings, our experience of Bhagavad Gita, we remember the seed for all of this. I'm encouraging all of you, if you know someone, who's coming to meet Guruji at Sandipani, write them a note, give them a card, draw them something so that they can give this to Puja Swami Tejumayananda at Sandipani. As we complete the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna, Prince Arjuna, Sanjaya, Rishi Vyasa, Dhritarashtra, etc. No one is forgetting how they've come to experience what they're experiencing. We too should imbibe this. In verse 72, Sri Krishna is leaning towards Prince Arjuna, almost like smelling him, looking him in the eyes and asking, Worked? <laughs> Worked with a question mark. Then in verse 73, Prince Arjuna leans in more to look him in the eye so he can smell his fragrance. And he said, worked with an exclamation mark. So worked with a question mark, work with, worked with an exclamation mark. In verse 74, Sanjay starts to share words. This Bhagavad Gita, this culture of care, works. In verse 75, Sri Krishna has shared through Sanjaya, through Prince Arjuna. All of this working is on account of grace. Grace comes in the form of guidance. I had mentioned how the origin of grace is God. And so if I can share this radiation to us, Bhagavan Narayana, 
expresses as Rishi Vyasa, who expresses as Shri Krishna. This grace is in a conduit. It's in the form of a parampara, a lineage. All of this is shared. And in verse 76, Sanjaya is continuing to share with Dhritarashtra how by remembering God and God's grace, by remembering Sri Krishna asking Prince Arjuna if this worked, him sharing this worked, this worked, hopefully the same will happen to Dhritarashtra. His physical blindness is not his weakness, that could be his strength. It is his inner world blindness. He is not seeing or feeling this culture of care. With Prince Arjuna, Sri Krishna, with Sanjay, with Rishi Vyasa, and how all of this is being facilitated by Bhagavan Narayana. There's a lovely portion of the Mahabharata where Rishi Vidura is sharing insights about life. There's a section where he describes what it means to be a pandita. Pandita means one who's filled and so can facilitate this fullness. Here are some of the descriptions of one who's feeling fullness and so can share this grace. Pravritta Vak Pandita, one who has a clear flow of thoughts and can converse on various subjects. Doesn't that describe Prince Arjuna Sri Krishna, Sanjaya Rishi Vyasa? Chitrakataha Pandita, one who can speak in such a manner <coughs> that it brings the subject to life and helps the listener visualize the topic. Does that describe the culture of care? Uhavan, Pandita, one who can infer and interpret with clarity to form conclusions from facts. Yes? Ashu Grantasya Vakta, Pandita, one who quickly expresses the meaning of various scriptures. Pratibhavan Pandita, one who is able to inspire the listener. I share these details to help us feel this grace that this whole culture of care, the teacher, the teaching, the taught, what Rishi Vidura has described, this describes what we're experiencing. We continue with Sanjaya sharing with Dhritarashtra. Sanjaya knows Dhritarashtra is not going to listen. He's not going to change. But he can't help himself. He is following moksha. He's facilitating moksha. He's also felicitating moksha or freedom. Tacha sam smritya sam smritya rupam ati adbhutam harehe vismayo me mahan rajan krishyami cha punaf punaha joy. I believe this is called penultimate, the second last of the final verses. Sanjay is continuing. I am reading the translation. This verse is very much similar to the previous verse. Remembering, and again remembering, that most wonderful form of Hari. Great is my wonder. O King, and I rejoice again and again. Sanjay sharing with Dhritarashtra is incidental. He is feeling, and you see he uses the word Hari. 
like the word Narayana. He knows Sri Krishna is not this ordinary being in this plane. He is a divinity proper. The word Hari means the one who takes away. Takes away what's holding you back. Sanjay is feeling this. He's using this word as if Dhritarashtra can feel the same. He can take away your inner blindness. Again and again. Yesterday when I was speaking, I used the word laddu. And I didn't catch myself that many people don't know what a laddu is. So a laddu is a, in English, a sweet meat. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. It's an energy ball. <laughs> and why I'm bringing that up is because there's been so much, you can call it repetition, but more so reconciliation in the Bhagavad Gita that no detail has been left. Everyone has tried so hard to make the person who's suffering from confusion clear. And with all of this effort now, there's personality after personality that's sharing from their heart this works. My final thought on this, I'm reading an insight from Pujaswami Chinmayananda. To a great devotee, Remembering the form of the beloved of his heart is itself an ecstatic joy. And where love is, there, in repeated onward gushes, the mind automatically reaches, and every time his mind, in that state of love divine, recognizes that everything existing in this world is but his form. Whatever you love, you will naturally be attracted to that. You will naturally imbibe that. These final verses are like testimonials. We may not love Bhagavad Gita, but if we love in Sarjana's condition, if we love Sri Krishna, if we love Rishi Vyasa, we will also come to love the Bhagavad Gita. From inspiration to application. Your application started off with, what do I want from you? I want your effort. A way you can do this is the five earlies. In our diversity conference workshop yesterday, I was sharing with the seekers, and many of them are joining us right now, that I get up at 4.30, two hours before everyone else gets up. And that waking up early really makes the difference in being an extraordinary seeker and being an ordinary seeker. Wake up early. Second was, I wanted you to give time. And this time is for you to encourage searchers or seekers to use all of these flows, these paths, for them to feel that this works. In a more factual way, you, if you can encourage and make another seeker accountable in a course, in Meaningful Mornings, that would be you giving your time. It's not just about spreading the word, it's about following up with accountability. Now what do I want? Your resources. For you to give your resources. Please try to understand the system that I'm explaining. One of the greatest leaders in our culture, his name is Raja Prithu. He shared with his praja, with his people, every one of you has three responsibilities. To follow dharma, to facilitate dharma, and to felicitate, in English those are words like appreciate, celebrate, etc., dharma. 
Now think of the system. You giving your effort is you following dharma. You giving your time is you facilitating dharma. See how the greatest leader is encouraging us and we have a path. We have a flow to live like this. Giving your resources is you felicitating dharma. In our community, there have been so many environmental charities that we have given hundreds of thousands of dollars to because we can't do that work. I'm not trained in that. You're not trained in water pollution and air measurement. But we can support those who are engaged in that dharma, correct? And that responsibility. And so making this super specific. On May 8th, we had opened up an opportunity called Sadguru Shishya Kritagnyata. This is for all of us to offer our gratitude to the seed of this community, of this culture of care. In a very Sattvic expectation, I feel the minimum that every one of you should give in terms of your resources is that $108 to Puja Swami Tejo Mayananda. My brain is not fast right now in calculating, but 1080 divided by 108 would be like 10 cents, correct? Or a cent, something like that, for every opportunity and meaningful morning. Give your effort, your time, and resources. This will be you being the ideal praja. Praja to our great leaders. Tomorrow when we gather, we will complete the final verse of chapter 18, the final verse of Bhagavad Gita, and I will share with you our study plan for a few more mornings to connect a few more dots. Shandi, 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 Ijo.